For WKQB Nashville, good morning. This is Nick in for Ron. It's 7.01, and here's Dan Fogelberg, Jim Weisberg on KQB 106. Dan Fogelberg, Tim Weisberg on KQB 106. Morning, this is Nick at 7.05. And our back-to-bed contest going strong. We're going to give away another three-day weekend this week, and you can pick up your entry blank to get a day off with pay from your job at all Shoney's. So no purchase necessary. We're going to be doing it again Friday morning on KQB 106. It's time to give away those tickets now to the Vandy Citadel game tonight. We've had some people calling in, and we have a bunch of entries. Why don't you reach into the hat here? And good gosh... Look out one. Okay, here's our winner of the tickets for this Vanderbilt home game. Well, it's Neil Harrison, guy that lives here in Nashville. So he'll be going to the Vandy Citadel game. Compliments of KQB 106. This Christmas. KQB 106. Rain's going to be ending. Cloudy and cooler today. A high today of only about 45, 46. Low tonight, 28. Right now, 41 in Nashville. We have Paul Randall Dickerson, PRD on the line. Hello Paul? there. Hi, how's traffic this morning? Road ahead's not looking bad this morning, Nick. We have uh, a couple of accidents reported now off on the secondary routes. Nothing on the interstates. The traffic volume just starting to build appreciably on the interstate web. And uh, we have basically dry streets to contend with this morning, which is a pleasant change from yesterday. Uh, we had, in a couple places, six and eight inches of water over the interstate routes. Uh, 40 just yeah. once you get onto the loop heading toward Memphis. All that yesterday afternoon, 8th Avenue uh, up on 265 was a sticky place, too. All that's gone. The secondary streets and some of the secondary roadways will have a little water left on them yet. Uh, latest report out of Kingston Springs is that the Harpeth River is still rising, but is expected to tail off with no evacuation necessary. Mm-hmm. Just basically not as bad a morning as we might have had yeah. considering yesterday. Waldecker was uh, mentioning that he had three inches of water in his kitchen <laughs> this morning. Three inches of water in his kitchen? Yeah. Uh, I'll make it easy to, to boil the coffee. <laughs> you really? <laughs> He just floated from uh, one end to the other on a little raft and made his breakfast. Okay, well, thanks, Paul. We'll be checking with you in just a bit with the sports shorts, right? Very good. Okay, we'll see you. All right, it's uh, 7.09. We've got some sticks now from Pieces of Eight on KQB 106. KQB 106, the Steve Miller Band at 719. Congratulations going out to Neil Harrison, who just uh, took away two tickets to the Vandy Citadel home game that we gave away. We'll be doing it again for the next Vandy game, which is uh, this Friday. We'll be having a draw for the Saturday game. Casey's coming along in just a bit. Uh, we got some new albums coming soon from Rod Stewart and Led Zeppelin. You know when they get here, we'll be playing them for you on KQB 106. 721 with Nick in the morning on KQB 106. Back to bed contest. Well, we gave away a day off with pay last week. Last Friday, we're going to do it again this Friday. You can pick up your entry blank. Still time to get in for this week at all showdays with no purchase necessary. Casey, there's some uh, traffic uh, traffic tie-up. I heard from Paul Randall Dickerson on the intersection of uh, Trinity Lane and Dickerson Road, about a mile off I-65. So, uh, okay, well, let people, people out. Uh... Maybe Look out for it. Around or something. Uh, there's probably uh, quite a bit of. Uh, Take another exit. <laughs> right. The rainfall last night came on in full force. In fact, the National Weather Service reports that nearly four inches of rain fell yesterday in Nashville, Middle Tennessee. The spring like deluge resulted in flash flood warnings for more than two dozen Middle Tennessee counties. Another inch of rain was expected this morning. Nashville normally gets less than five inches for the entire month of December. Former White House advisor Dr. Peter Bourne says he favors the decriminalization of marijuana, but he opposes legalizing the weed. Bourne told the Southeastern Conference on Alcohol and Drug Abuse in Atlanta this weekend that he opposes legalization of pot because of the drug's effect on very young people. He says studies have shown that one out of every ten high school students in the nation smokes pot at least once a day. Bourne says, in his words, these youngsters should be doing other things besides smoking marijuana to help them grow up. Bourne was President Carter's chief advisor on health matters until he resigned in July after it was reported he prescribed quaaludes for a White House employee using the name of a fictitious patient. Bourne's a psychiatrist licensed to practice medicine in Georgia. He faces a disciplinary hearing December 12th before the Georgia Board of Medical Examiners on his handling of that prescription. Fresh from his whirlwind visit to London and Paris, former President Richard Nixon concentrated on football and families. He began a 10-day stay in New York. An entourage of Secret Service men accompanied Nixon as he and his wife, Pat, Pat, left the Waldorf Astoria Hotel yesterday afternoon for a quiet day, visiting uh, daughter Tricia and son-in-law Edward Cox. 
Seems life hasn't been all laughs for comedian Jerry Lewis. He says he almost killed himself five years ago while under the influence of addictive painkillers. In a People magazine interview, Lewis says he held back from shooting himself when I heard my children running and laughing through the hall. That snapped him out of it. Lewis, the magazine says, became addicted to heavy doses of Percodan after doctors were unable to stop the pain from a spinal injury he suffered during a Pratt fall in an act at Las Vegas in 65. Lewis says the experience frightened him. He's further quoted as saying, if I hadn't had seven or eight pills in me at the time, I don't think I would have considered killing myself. Famed heart specialist Dr. Michael DeBakey recently persuaded the comedian to enter the doctor's Houston clinic where examination showed Lewis had a stomach ulcer. DeBakey was quoted as saying the painkillers had hidden ulcer symptoms, and if the condition had gone undetected a few more weeks, it could have hemorrhaged and killed him. Lewis has since undergone new treatments for his back and withdrawn from the drug. If all goes as planned, the retro rockets on the Pioneer Venus 1 spacecraft will fire early, later this morning, and the craft will go into orbit around Earth's nearest planetary neighbor. Although the Soviets have sent 10 unmanned missions to Venus, Pioneer 1 is the first American craft designed to do more than fly by the cloud-shrouded planet. Five more American probes, all designed to actually enter the Venusian atmosphere, are due to reach the end of the 300-million-mile journey to Venus on Saturday. A Dutch court has ordered that Dutch millionaire Pieter Menten be freed after dropping charges that he committed war crimes while serving with the Nazi SS. The court accepted Menten's claim that a former Dutch justice minister promised him immunity in 1952. Menten was accused of killing 20 to 30 Jews in Poland in 1941. Menten says the immunity promise came in return for his pledge not to reveal the cooperation some Dutch officials allegedly gave the Nazis. Official sources in Jerusalem say Prime Minister Begin will reaffirm Israel's refusal to amend the draft peace treaty. Begin reportedly will send a letter today to President Sadat of Egypt responding to Sadat's proposals to start the treaty talks again. An FBI agent who met the survivors of the Guyanan death ritual in New York yesterday says the Bureau has prepared arrest warrants for an undetermined number of cultists believed involved in the murders of Representative Leo Ryan and four other Americans. The agent would not specify who was named in the warrants or what charges were made. A report by the House Armed Services Committee says the military is incapable of getting enough recruits to handle a crisis. The committee calls this a worsening risk to national security. A civil rights damage suit filed by 13 relatives of those who died at Kent State University in 1970 goes to retrial today in Cleveland. Ohio Governor James Rhodes and Ohio National Guard officials were cleared of liability in the original trial, but the Supreme Court ordered a retrial after criticizing the judge's handling of reported threats on a juror. Attorneys for Cullen Davis expect to open their defense today in Houston. State prosecutors have held the floor for the last month and are preparing to wrap up today. Davis is charged with conspiracy in an alleged murder-for-hire case. Larry Ford of Fort Walton Beach, Florida, was so upset when property tax assessors said his beach house was worth $2,200. Ford said the house, which he did not use, was worth about $200. So rather than pay the tax... Ford tore the house down. Now, he says, the value of the house is zilch. The East National YMCA is having Christmas trees for sale. It's at the Y, 2624 Gallatin Road. KQB weather, cloudy and colder, light drizzle ending early today. High 45, low tonight, 28. Right now, it's 40 in Nashville. This is Casey Maxwell. Tore his house down, did he? That, that's one way to solve your tax problems. <laughs> really? Didn't even need any legislation for that one. Well, thanks, Casey. We'll be checking back with you in just a bit. 727, here's some heart for you on KQB 106. KQB 106 morning. This is Nick at 736, a little bit of Santana. We've got our back-to-bed contest now. How do you feel just getting into work? How would you like it if someone just called up and said, hey, you got the day off? Well, we're doing it to people. And uh, if you'd like to get in on the action, possibly get a vacation of your own, three-day weekend, we'll pick up an entry blanket, all shonies. No purchase necessary. We'll be doing it again this Friday. Sony products available at Audio Systems, 205 22nd Avenue North, just off Alliston Place. Jingle bell. Okay, well, it's 7.38 this morning. Uh, rain is going to be ending today. Cloudy and cooler weather is coming through, but no snow. <laughs> That's what uh, Paul Randall Dickerson has said. Uh, we're looking for a high today of 46, a low tonight of 28, and right now of 41 in Nashville. 
Well, thank you, Paul. It's 741 at KQB 106, and we got uh, something from that new Clapton Backless album for you. Smeagles for you. KQB 106. Good morning. This is Nick in for Ryan. It's 7.52. And uh, we want to congratulate Neil Harrison, who uh, lives here in Nashville, won himself a couple of tickets to the Vanderbilt Citadel basketball game tonight as part of our uh, Vandy ticket giveaway. And our B is off taking a little vacation right now. I think he made a little run south of the border. But uh, he'll be back making his visits real soon. I want to thank everybody for having us on while they work. And um, I'd like to know if you're listening at work. So why don't you, uh, before the boss comes in, sneak into his office and steal a piece of that nice company letterhead, okay? Paper, and uh, just write us a note. Remember, KQB 106, located 159 4th Avenue North, Nashville 37219. Candle holders and kills. 754 on KQB 106. Casey Maxwell standing by with uh, what's happening this morning. Good morning. Hi. Governor-elect Lamar Alexander and legislative leaders will be approached by Senator Jim Sasser about a bill that would permit the Tennessee Valley Authority to issue tax-exempt bonds. Sasser thinks elected officials are obliged to help keep TVA power rates at a minimum. He says TVA now borrows federal funds at a rate of 8% interest, but that tax-exempt bonds at 6% interest would result in savings of as much as $25 million. The chairman of the Tennessee Pardons and Parole Board says the panel has no plans to discuss whether Roger Humphrey should be granted a clemency hearing. Charles Trauber said yesterday that the board is awaiting an attorney general's opinion on the panel's compliance with Tennessee's open meeting law. He said he'd asked the state attorney general's office for an opinion on the board's compliance with the state's sunshine law. Trauber had said Friday that the board would meet today to consider a clemency hearing for Humphreys, the son of Governor Ray Blanton's political ally. Humphreys serving a 20- to 40-year prison term for the slayings of his ex-wife and her lover. Last year, Blanton promised to pardon Humphreys, but he said before the November 7th election he'd changed his mind. But he didn't rule out commutation, and earlier this month told reporters that correction officials were evaluating Humphreys and inmates at the governor's residence for possible commutation. Cleanup operations continued today at the site of a Southern Railway train derailment in Nelson County, Virginia. The eight-car Southern Crescent passenger train jumped the tracks early yesterday morning, piling cars like matchsticks in a shallow gorge. Six people died in the accident. About 60 were injured, five critically. Rescue squadsmen worked through the day to free a cook trapped for some 11 hours under a stove in the dining car. The National Transportation Safety Board and the railroad are investigating the cause of the accident on the scenic tour. Commerce Secretary Juanita Krebs says she's lifted the ban on exporting petroleum equipment to the Soviet Union. The government blocked the shipment of drilling and pumping equipment last July to show displeasure over the trials of two Soviet dissidents. Mrs. Krebs made the announcement in Moscow where she's taking part in trade talks. The events of May 4, 1970 will be the focus of attention in a trial opening in federal court in Cleveland later today. Actually, it's a retrial of a civil rights damage suit brought by 13 relatives of the victims of the shootings at Kent State University. The suit names more than two dozen defendants, including Ohio Governor James Rhodes. A crucial maneuver is due to take place in a few hours, about 300 million miles away. The retro rockets of the Pioneer Venus 1 spacecraft are to fire to send the spacecraft into orbit around the Earth's latest planetar nearest planetary neighbor. The leaders of the nine European common market countries open a two-day summit in Brussels today. They're going to finish work on the European money system. The plan, due to take effect January 1st, is designed to stabilize money markets. The dollar lost a bit of ground in early trading in Europe today. In Japan, the dollar closed lower. The price of gold up nearly $3 in London. NATO ministers open their annual winter meeting in Brussels today. Among the items on the agenda is a report suggesting aid to Turkey to help the government overcome very serious economic problems. A member of a citizens band radio club in Buffalo, New York, picked up a distress call from a stranded motorist and his family recently. Robert Gajewski relayed the message to Buffalo police, stranded motorist on Route 93. The police relayed the message to the Nevada Highway Patrol. It was Route 93 in Nevada. On the sports page, years from now, the record books will carry plenty of reminders about the day Tennessee and Vanderbilt tangled in 1978 for their traditional football season finale. Actually, Vanderbilt may have finished at the bottom of the Southeastern Conference standing this season, but it placed five players on the academic all-conference football team. 
The five players from Vanderbilt are offensive guard Tommy Woodruff, defensive lineman Tim English and Kenny Cole, linebacker Randy Citizen, and punter Roger Alsop. Tennessee placed two players on the academic team, their offensive back David Rudder and defensive back Greg Gaines. We'll have weather next. The next 60 seconds. Nine. The Single Parent Society is having a Sunday afternoon coffee and a dance. It happens two times a month. You can call them at 228-6478. KQB weather, cloudy and colder, light drizzle ending early today. High of 45, low tonight, 28. Right now, 40 in Nashville. This is Casey Maxwell. Well, thank you, Casey. It's now 8 o'clock. Yeah, we're WKQB. Nashville from Vegas Banquet, The Stones on KQB 106. KQB 106 with Chicago. It's 810. Nick in for Ron and our back-to-bed contest going full blast. We're going to give away another three-day weekend this week. And there's still time to get in on it and possibly win yourself a day off from your job with pay. Entry blanks at all Shoney's with no purchase necessary. This Wednesday night.